Hello and welcome to this fifth video in my series about building apps with lit element. In this video we are going to take the application that we built in the previous four videos and turn it into a progressive web application. If you're unfamiliar with the term it simply means an application that loads fast, that works reliably regardless of network connections and in our case it's going to work offline as well. So in order to turn an application into a progressive web application, one of the best places to start is in the dev tools in the application uh, tab here. This will essentially walk you through the different steps needed to turn this into a progressive web application. So the first thing that it's going to tell us that we need to do is add a manifest file. So let's jump into our code and fix that. Here in our source folder, we are going to create a new file for the manifest. We'll call it manifest.webmanifest. All right, and in here, we're gonna just add some information about our application in general. So here, I'm giving the name, the full name, the short name, start URL, how it should be displayed if this application is installed on a device. Standalone, for instance, means that it's going to hide the browser Chrome. We give some colors, uh, links to some icons, so that it can get a nice icon. Once we have the file, we need to link it from our index file. So here in our head, we can add a link to the manifest file. So just uh, rel manifest and then the at, uh, URL to our to our manifest file. So we'll uh, save this, go and check if this worked. So right now, uh, there's something weird with this, it's not working. And this is actually because of the Webpack configuration that I have here. And it's only copying over assets that I define it to copy over unless they are uh, discoverable through the, uh, through the JavaScript dependencies. In this case, since it's not a JavaScript dependency, it's not going to get picked up by itself but we can add it here into the assets array and it, uh, to get it copied over. So just uh, add the path here. Once we've made this change, we need to go into our terminal and restart the dev server since this is something that changes the actual webpack configuration. It won't get picked up the same way as changes to our application code. All right, so the server is up and running. Let's go back here. And now we can see that we don't have anything red here. If we go into the application uh, tab here, we can see that those uh, properties that we defined in the manifest file have been picked up and are displayed here. The next thing that we need to do is add a service worker. And that's something that we can actually try out here. So if we click on add to home screen, uh, it's going to say that we're not able to install this application quite yet because it doesn't have a service worker. All right, so uh, let's go into our code again and go into our index.js file here. So right now on our load listener, we're initializing the router. Let's add one more line here. Let's call register service worker. So we'll create a new new uh, function called register service worker. And then we'll create an async function for registering the service worker. The registration looks something like this. So you first do a feature detection, make sure that you have support for service worker. If you do, you call uh, navigator.serviceworker.register and you pass in the service worker file, which is a JavaScript file that we'll get to in just a second. If that fails, you can log the error. Likewise, if there is no support for service worker, we can just show a notification or a message in the console for now. The service worker file we already have here, but it's empty right now. Uh, in this case, in my Webpack configuration, I have added support for a plugin called uh, uh, called Workbox. Workbox is a plugin by Google that will look at the assets that Webpack is producing and what it'll do is it will cache those assets automatically and it will serve those assets when we are offline or if our connection is bad. So 
what this will do is it will inject the manifest and we need to use that injected value in our service worker. The way I do that is just make sure uh, we actually do have workbox defined and if it if we do then we will use this value the precache manifest that it was that got injected during the build and then we use workbox dot precaching uh, dot precache and route so that will take all the assets it will cache them and then if we happen to be offline or in a bad network situation it will be able to fall back on those assets so we will save this again we'll go into the application here and see what's happening so we have a service worker registered here you see that the code got picked up here that's that's very good that's what we want now in the workbox configuration I have actually configured it not to generate and inject that service worker unless we specifically ask for it to happen because sometimes during development it's much easier to not have the service worker enabled that way you know that you're always getting the latest assets so we're gonna start the dev server with the service worker injection enabled we do that by calling npm run dev colon sw so this will run the same dev server but now with the service worker injection enabled all right I'll close that go back here and what you can see now is that workbox says that it's uh, responding to all these different assets that we have we should be able to go into our cache storage here and verify that we have a whole bunch of these uh, assets in our cache what it should also enable us to do is take our application offline and refresh and still have it work so now instead of going to the network what happens is that it will try to go to the network realize that that doesn't work and then it will return assets from the cache so that's pretty cool now we're actually able to load the application even if we are offline but if we make changes to our application, so we add like a couple of to-dos here and we refresh these, uh, or we refresh the application, you notice that we always start from scratch. So there's no, it doesn't remember what happened before. So let's take a look at how we could improve that and actually persist our state across different reloads. To do this, we'll go into our store file here. Again, store is the central kind of coordinator of everything Redux. In here uh, we are essentially what we're trying to do is we want to take the state and persist it to local storage and then as we're booting up our application we want to see if we have a persisted state in the local storage and start off with that instead of the empty state so first I'll define a storage key just a key that we can use for storing this and looking it up in local storage storage key let's call this like to do something something visible and then we'll define two functions one for saving the state and one for loading it the so save state will take in the state and it will add that to the local storage we'll call local storage dot set item we'll give in the storage key as the key and then we will run json dot stringify on the state so that's saving the state then for retrieving the state we will create a function with no input parameters and this will then try to get the item from local storage so we'll uh, call local storage local storage dot get item and again we'll use this storage key and then we will return depending on if we had something uh, in the local storage we will either call json.parse to turn that into a json object or then we'll uh, return undefined if we return undefined that will essentially mean that we bootstrap uh, redux or the Redux store with the defaults, which means that our reducer will default back to this initial state. 
Okay, so we have a way of saving the state, a way of loading the state. Now we need to initialize this so that the when we create the store, it will actually go and check if we have a state from before. We do that by passing in load state as the second parameter, or actually calling load state, I should say. So we call load state, and this will either be the persisted state, or then it will be undefined. All right, and then finally we need to save the state. So we'll subscribe to the store. So we'll subscribe to it. And this takes in a callback function. In the callback function, we'll call save state and we'll call store.getState to get that state that we want to get stored. Okay, so we'll uh, go back to our application. Let's add some to do's here. One, two, three, and refresh. And there you go. You can see that these are now persisted. If I mark one as done, and I refresh, it will still be persisted. We can go offline, we can refresh, and it'll still work. So now we've turned our application into a fully offline capable progressive web application. And that's it for this series on Lit Element. I might still add a couple of bonus videos on things like using TypeScript. If there are other topics that you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments and I'd be more than happy to take suggestions. Thanks for watching.